I think a lot of people want to know on a scale of documentary film to yeah. Disney film. I mean, right. how real was it? 92%. The movie? So you're telling me Rudy Rudiger told lies in his own story. And we compromised on scenes, we compromised on events, and we had to do composites and embellishments to make the story work. <laughs> Let's get to the bottom of this. Hello, and welcome to Sports Vaults, presented by Data Productions, uncovering the untold, lost, and forgotten files of the sports world. Today on Sports Vaults, we will be breaking down one of the best and most inspirational football movies ever filmed. One of my personal favorites, Rudy. It is an account of the life of Daniel Rudy Rudiger, who had dreams of playing football at the University of Notre Dame despite significant obstacles. It was the first film Notre Dame administration allowed to be shot on campus since Newt Rockney, All-American, in 1940. Oh, I've win just one for the Kipper. They have their image, and they want it right. They don't want it something, you know, fictitious. So you had to work real close. In 2005, Rudy was named one of the best 25 sports movies of the previous 25 years in two polls by ESPN. It was also ranked the 54th most inspiring movie of all time by the American Film Institute. Legendary Los Angeles Laker Kobe Bryant even said it was his favorite movie. I said, hey, Kobe. I said, Rudy. I said, Rudiger? Rudy Rudiger? <laughs> yeah, I said, yeah. He gets real emotional, takes his basketball, walks over towards me. He says, is this your son? I said, yeah. He says, your dad's my hero. In an interview, the real Rudy claims that the movie is 92% accurate. A real 92%. Which is still very good for Hollywood produced films. Hollywood movies tend to be over embellished for the viewer's entertainment. So props to TriStar at Sony. Number one. The real Coach Divine wasn't a bad guy. Every movie needs an antagonist, whose sole goal is keeping the protagonist from achieving glory. And Rudy is no different. While Rudy dealt with plenty of negativity from his peers, Coach Dan Divine in the movie was probably the most powerful of them all when it came to Rudy's dreams. In Coach Divine's mind, Rudy was far from the best player on the roster, so he virtually has no shot in playing in any game. Coach Devine only relents to let Rudy suit up after the team's incredible gesture of humanity, one of the emotional climaxes of the entire film. However, in reality, Coach Devine was just as supportive of Rudy as anyone else on the team. During the actual Georgia Tech game, Devine was adamant that everyone got to play. Next, Rudy's teammates did not forfeit their jerseys for him. In the 92% of truth, yeah. The guys throwing the jerseys no. on the table? See, that's, no. that's called embellishment. Arguably, one of the most inspiring moments of the film is when the entire team rallies together and threatens to quit right before the last game of the season. It's Rudy's final chance to play in a real game, but he isn't listed on the active roster. The number of players allowed on the sidelines is just too small. Because Eric Parsegian promised all seniors would dress for their final home game. He leaves Notre Dame, Dan Devine comes in, and then CAA slaps a rule on Dan Devine's first year. Only 60 players can dress for their home game. That left 50 kids out. So when Rudy learns he isn't listed, he finally quits. And I said, why am I out here? I mean, I'm not going to ever dress. His teammates march into Devine's office to offer to let Rudy play in their place. But that did not happen in real life. Makes for a great scene on camera, though. And Dan Devine called into a radio station was when Rudy was reporting the, uh, 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 promoting the movie, and he said, if any kid would have put their jersey on my desk, they never would have seen it again. <laughs> and it was a dramatization of an idea that the players were supporting him. Not true in the sense of did it actually historically happen. Third, the GI Bill would have covered Rudy's tuition. The story of a student athlete struggling to make ends meet is a relatable one for many out there. But this does not pertain to the real Rudy Rudiger. Filmmakers completely left out Rudy's time in the Navy. I went in the Navy. Mm. The Navy kind of put me on the right course. I came back from the Navy, went to work. My friend died. That's when the trigger went off. In the movie, Rudy has to balance school, work, and football. He continually struggles with the ability to make tuition payments to Holy Cross, even with his job as a groundskeeper under Fortune. So I had to earn it academically first 
before I can get to Notre Dame. That was the challenge academically because I didn't know I had learning disorder in high school, um, dyslexia. In reality, Rudy's tuition was covered at both Holy Cross and Notre Dame under the GI Bill since he served in the military. The lack of making tuition payments would have freed up much of Rudy's time as a student athlete and his ongoing struggle to maintain balance would have all but evaporated. By not adding Rudy's Navy career in the movie, there is no GI Bill, and with no GI Bill, his workload increases tenfold while in school. Hardship sells movies, folks. Next, Frank Rudiger, Rudy's older brother, never existed. In the movie, Rudy's older brother was a pseudo-antagonist throughout the film. He mocked Rudy's dreams of playing football for Notre Dame for his entire upbringing. But in real life, Rudy was the oldest boy of 14 children. See, they invented the older brother, Frank, to add spice to the story, with all the other discouraging voices Rudy dealt with along the way, to secure his place in Notre Dame lore. Also, Fortune didn't exist either. Fortune's timing in the film aligns perfectly with Rudy's need of an unassuming mentor. He needed a mentor with experience who knew how to tap into Rudy's ambitions and understood his burning determination to achieve his goal. Fortune's purpose in the film was almost the exact opposite of Frank's, but the reasoning behind their fabrications was identical. Fortune's character was a composite of everyone Rudy encountered along the way who was encouraging. But something kept telling me through friendships and relationships, and I call it the who factor. It's who you know that kept you going janitor, my friends, everybody who would encourage you, don't quit, don't quit. Just little, you know, pokes here and there. Remember when Rudy was reciting Newt Rockney's halftime speech? We're gonna go inside, we're gonna go outside, inside and outside. They can't lick us. what do you say, man? Well, that never happened at halftime. Notre Dame juggernaut coach Newt Rockney led the Fighting Irish to win five national championships between 1918 and 1930. He's also responsible for authoring the famous halftime speech that Rudy Rudiger recites twice in the movie. But according to the university's own archives, Rockney performed a pep talk for the newsreels. It was not for any particular game or situation. Nonetheless, in the film, Rudy performs Rockney's showy speech verbatim to an empty locker room. And actually, Rudy's dad was actually supportive. In the scenes depicting Rudy's early years, the audience first learns of his ambition to play football at Notre Dame as the family gathers around the television for dinner. Rudy declares, after high school, I'm going to play football at Notre Dame, and his father impulsively laughs out loud. Rudy is visibly crushed. His instinctive disbelief sets the tone for the adversity yet to come. The real Daniel Rudiger was always encouraging and supportive of his children's dreams. In addition, Notre Dame did not play Penn State when Rudy attended. There's a winter game in the film that takes place during the 1974 season, with Rudy supporting the Fighting Irish as a civilian from the stands. However, the Notre Dame and Penn State football teams did not play each other in the 1974 or 1975 seasons. All the game scenes in the movie were filmed throughout the 1992 football season, including the game against Penn State on November 14, 1992. Most likely for budgetary reasons, they decided not to reenact one of the actual games back in the 74 or 75 season, which led to the decision to pretend Penn State was on the 1974 schedule. Going back to the student-athlete time management balance, come to find out, Rudy was an avid boxer at Notre Dame, which led him to acquiring lots of clout for his won't-quit attitude. Looks like he had a lot more time on his hands than the movie portrayed. Notre Dame vs Georgia Tech was not the last game of the season. Technically, it was just the last home game for Notre Dame in the 1975 season. But the team played two away games in two consecutive weeks after beating Georgia Tech. The case can be made, though, that it was definitely Rudy's last chance to get in a game since he never traveled with the team. But filmmakers painted a picture where Coach Devine reminded the seniors right before the game, it's your last one, so make it count. Apparently, seniority and experience do not translate to a spot on the travel roster. And finally, last but not least, the fans did not cheer for Rudy until after he made his game ending sack. And it was only a small section of the crowd who cheered. The Rudy, 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 Rudy chant in the film's final game is simply legendary. All the pain, 
the suffering, the endless hours finally paying off when Rudy storms the field during the waning seconds of a blowout game. In the movie, the chant starts with a handful of players on the sideline and spreads like wildfire over the entire home crowd. Man, one of the greatest scenes in sports. Even so, Hall of Famer quarterback Joe Montana says the scene where they carry Rudiger off the field victoriously was not portrayed accurately. And in reality, he says, they kind of just were playing around. And unable to pass, they've just been unable to get back in this game. Rudy Allen drops to throw, they're going to get him, they do back at the 14. Notre Dame's second line defensive unit swarms in to get Rudy Allen in to make the first hit for the Fighting Irish was Jay Akterhoff. And now the clock ticks off the final seconds. The gun sounds, and Notre Dame with its most impressive win. And when Montana said, you know, a lot of fiction in the movie Rudy, and my guys were upset with no, Joe he Montana. Was, he, was, he was absolutely right. Joe Montana was right. There was a lot of fiction in the movie, and, and it's based on a true story. But for, I want to say a couple things. When... Joe Fresh, uh, 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 Joe Montana was a freshman when Rudy was a senior. Joe Montana, when the movie came out, was one of the only people to get behind the story. He said he remembered Rudy. He said he really uh, respected what happened on that thing. He was a, a really positive person around it. I don't know how many Super Bowl rings you have to win in order for when somebody meets you on the street to say, hey, did you meet the real guy who dressed for one game, like who played for 27 <laughs> seconds? Like, I think Joe Montana has every right to put a little bit of context around the movie because he's a real person and he had a real experience. Not all the players like me, trust me, nor did they even know I was on the team because walk-ons are ignored during that time. And uh, you can't blame them because we were, we were paying to them. There you have it, the 8% of inaccuracies within the Rudy film. With all this being said, the movie is still great and provides inspiration for anyone who is looking for some. Life is too short, go for your dream, what do you have to lose? People generally understand that it's Hollywood's job to make the most compelling and entertaining movie as possible. Which means sometimes you have to lie or stretch the truth some. The movie Rudy actually put out when the movie came out a, a list of things that were absolute um, creative license. Regardless, the movie will go down in sports history as one of the best. Did you have any idea when you set out to make the movie just what your story and the legacy of your story would be? I knew the story was everybody's story. What's your take on this topic? Does it change your view on the movie? Do you have any suggestions on what I should do next? Let me know your thoughts below in the comments and subscribe for more investigation content like this. Join my Patreon today for only $5 to receive a monthly esoteric documentary on your favorite sports athletes and events. Real, raw, uncut, and uncensored without the limitations of YouTube. Join today to see the other side of the sports world.